Hello, what we're going to create today is this and this artwork resembles some shapes that you've seen in other artworks that uh, surfaced recently on the internet and the reason why all of these shapes look kind of similar is because they all rely on uh, the same underlying principle and the principle is called a Voronoi diagram. And I'm going to do another video about what makes the Voronoi diagram so special and what's its relationship to a Delaunay triangulation and what is that. But in this quick tip I'll just show you how to build this artwork. First thing I'm going to drop down is a grid. Drop that down, dive in, center it. Exactly. Next thing I'd like to do is scatter points on this grid and the way I'm going to do it today is with a spray paint sop so I can control where those points will be scattered. And I'm just going to paint some points in here like that. And the next thing I need to do in order to generate a Voronoi pattern is to first generate a Delaunay triangulation. And inside of Houdini that's done with a triangulate 2D sop. Just gonna wire that up here. And this yields a Delaunay triangulation. It just works in a plane, but for our needs, uh, this is enough. However, I see some problems in this. Um, and the thing I'd like to have is, I'd like to have the shape of the underlying grid to um, be regarded in the triangulation. And I can solve that by just first going into the grid and dialing down its rows and columns so that we have only like one face here and those four edges and then add a resample node in order to let me highlight that in order to add new intermediate points along the edges maybe not so many but only say one each unit and then merge those points with the spray paint points by using a merge node Wire these two up. Let's make this proper here and attach the triangulate node to the merged points now. So what I have now is this. And all I have to do now in, um, in order to generate a Voronoi diagram is to use a divide sop, wire that up to a little triangulation, highlight it and tick the compute dual checkbox. And what that yields is on the one hand normal errors as you can see by the weird shading here but on the other hand maybe able to see it here is these cell patterns and that's a Voronoi diagram. So next thing I'm going to do is fix those normal errors by adding a normal sop here, highlighting that and this gives us this really neat Voronoi diagram that I can adjust by highlighting the spray paint node, making sure that the tool handle here is selected and then spray painting into the grid here and so I can on the fly adjust the look of my Voronoi diagram. However, this is a bit too linear for me. This has two strong edges. I want the individual cells to look a bit more rounded when you remember the artwork that I've shown you in the beginning. And the way I'm going to do it is just highlight the points here and you can see an edge has only two points at the moment. And so the first thing what I want to do is use the resample node again to add intermediate points along the edges and to that attach a smooth node. And what the smooth node is going to do is it will smoothen out any edges on the position. So when I disable this and re-enable it you can see it now gets those um, really nice organic cell patterns. One thing I'd like to point out in the smooth node is the cutoff frequency. You can um, increase your smoothing by dialing this up past one. So for example when I put a cutoff frequency of two in here you see the smoothing um, gets extreme um, which is not what I want in our case but just to let you know so for future projects maybe you'll need it. Um, you can increase the smoothing by, by dialing up the cutoff frequency past one. I'll just set it to zero and play with the smoothing iterations until the visual appearance is something that I like. For example, like that. Okay. The next thing I'd like to do is extrude those um, cells because at the moment they're just plainly flat and I would like to give them a bit of depth and I'm going to use the poly extrude for that. Wire that up in here highlight it, 
and just dial up the distance a bit. And what I see now is that it extruded those cells upward, but it didn't give them a back face. And that is because in here, output back was not checked. So I'm going to activate that. And what I have now are these extruded cells. One thing that's bugging me, however, is that at the larger cells, those intersections are a bit too close to each other and sometimes even overlapping. And what I'd like to uh, have is a small gap in between them. And the way I'm going to handle that is by using a peak sub. And what the peak sub does is it moves faces in the direction of their normals. So I'm just going to wire that up, highlight it. And as you can see, the normals get kind of shaky here. I'm going to fix that later. But what I can do now is within a small um, range of values, I can use it to push in those borders. So let me just check. Minus 0.2. Uh, maybe a tiny bit more. Something like that. Exactly. Now those normals are kind of wonky here. And the way I'm going to fix them is again by using a normal sop which I'll attach to it. Like that. And this is the basic technique for those Voronoi tiles. What I want to do now in order to create our final artwork um, are two things. On the one hand, I would like to take the non-smoothed Voronoi diagram, so this thing here, and turn it into a wireframe. And I'm going to do that with the wireframe node, which I'll just attach here, highlight, and that's a bit too strong, I guess, maybe something more like this. And I will add a merge node to merge my extruded faces with the wireframe. Highlight that and see how this looks. Yeah, quite okay. I like it. The last thing or the last two things I'd like to do before we can go into rendering this is I'd like to give it um, a base down here where it sits on. And as a base, I'd like to give it these cells, but taper them a bit while extruding that. So I'm going to take a poly extrude node and copy that. Pull that maybe out here. Highlight it. And what I'd like to do is have the top end of the extrusion tapered a bit. And the easiest way you can do that is by going into uh, was it here? No, it was into spine control. And adjust the thickness ramp. What this allows me to do is for each extrusion drive how the scaling of the um, top extruded face behaves. And I'd just like to give it a small taper, something like that. Maybe you can dial it down here and input the value manually. Something like that. And Again, add a normal node to it so the normal errors get fixed. Maybe dial down the cusp angle a bit, exactly like that. And merge that with the other geometry as well. Highlight that. And what I can see now, I'm directly intersecting it into the other extrusion. So what I need to do is use a transform node and move those downwards a bit. Something like that. So I gave them a base now where the other extrusion is coming out. Added this wire in between. And the last thing I'm going to do is add a box to it. Scale that a bit. Yeah, point, let's say point 0.2, move it downward a bit and make it bigger like that and also merge that like that. Also I'm gonna attach a normal sub to it so the shading normals are correctly displayed and 
maybe scale it a bit in its width. Nope. Something like that. And I would say we're ready to render this. So in order to render this with dive up, and first thing I'm gonna add is a camera. No, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually um, rotate this thing because now it's pointing upwards and um, what I'd like it to do is just be um, perpendicular to it so that it hangs on a wall, on a virtual wall, like um, an image would do, something like this. Exactly. Now I'm gonna position my camera and just control click on the camera symbol so it'll create a camera on the position that I have in my viewport and I'm gonna adjust the values so it's looking straight onto the picture and also set it on its zero point and maybe move it a bit downwards so the picture sits a bit a tiny bit on the top of the frame something like that next thing I'm gonna do is add an environment light and within the environment light give it an HDR map as light source for example this one okay what I need as well is in the output context I need a mantra node in order to set up our render engine and the only thing I'm going to do in here is click on the rendering tab and enable the physically based rendering the last thing I'm going to do is dive into our shading operators and just going to create a mantra surface and just dial up the base color a tiny bit so it looks brighter. Nope, not 5, but 0.5, exactly like that. And I'm going to go to our object level again and select the grid and in material just point to the mantra surface material that we just created. And we're good to go, we're good for rendering. So let's go into the render view and hit render. So it looks a bit dark and I can counteract that by going into the environment light and dialing up the light intensity to maybe two or even more to maybe four or even more to eight and let this converge. So this was a quick introduction on creating Voronoi patterns, smoothing them, um, basic extrusion operations and basic rendering. Stay tuned for more info on what is behind Voronoi and Delaunay triangulation and if you have any artwork um, that you'd like to share, please do so. We are always excited to see what you guys come up with. So cheers and see you next time.